Hey, this is most excellent having you stop by on the weekend. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of February 26th. Now, we're going to do the same thing today we do all through the week. We're going to be focusing in on some hot OTC and penny stocks. Now, when I say hot, I am not referring to stocks that have already rocketed the moon. They've spent their potential. We're looking for stocks that are under the radar, that still have potential to give. Now, we're going to be looking at both OTC and penny stocks. No, they're not the same. OTC stocks are on the OTC market. Penny stocks are on every market. Simply put, a penny stock is any stock under five bucks. It's not about what market they're on, it's all about price. So we are gonna be everywhere hunting these things down. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, well, actually any stock, I start here, the otcmarkets.com website. It is specifically for OTC investors. The site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. I do not know of one other site on the entire internet that does that. But they also bring in a lot of news for major exchange stocks. Now, it's not as exhaustive. You're going to find gaps in that information. But by starting here, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and frustration initially. If you have to go to the internet, then go to the internet. But start here first. You'll thank me later. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished on Friday. No need to update this and refresh it because that is what it is. And it isn't nice. Doggone it. All right, Friday, we were down again. Our dollar volume was at $1.3 billion. We need to be at $2 billion, and we haven't been there in a very long time. Share volume, we're down to $4.8 billion. We can't even maintain 5 billion shares, and we really need to be at 10 to get this market starting to move. Do you know that over a year ago, we were at over 70 billion shares a day, and now we can't even stick to 10? And our trades, well, we have been stuck between 250 and 300,000 trades for at least six months. And virtually this entire month, we can't even hit 250. Right now, we're at 245,000. So, sorry to say, the market is not improving. But I've done some hunting, and I think I found some stocks that could put some money in our pockets. You interested? I kind of thought you would be. Come on, I'll show you what I got. Now, here's a company we haven't looked at in a long time. This is Revlon Inc. That's right, the cosmetics company. You got it. They went bankrupt not too long ago, got yanked off the major exchange, thrown down to the pink on the OTC, and they've been there ever since. Well, they just had a filing come out, and it is big news. They have come to an agreement with their debtors. They have got a settlement with their lenders, and it looks like they're going to be exiting bankruptcy in April. This April. Well, they didn't put out a news press about this, just a filing. And the only organization, the only people on the entire internet to mention this yet is Seeking Alpha. That's it. And when I look at the relative volume for Friday, this is still under the radar. Nobody's paying attention. And this is a huge company doing billions of dollars worth of revenue. So now would be a good time to consider Revlon. Revlon finished today on Friday almost at 79 cents and almost 2% gains. She's on the pink tier currently and she hasn't got any of those green ticks because she hasn't been here long and she probably isn't going to be here much longer either. So what was the relative volume for this stock today, Friday? Oh man, see what I mean? She is definitely under the radar. She fell from roughly 100,000 shares a day, which is already light, down to 14,000 shares on Friday. This is under the radar, folks. Share structure for this company. All right, they don't give us anything here except the outstanding. That's 54 million. I did a search and came up with, hey, how about numbers that match? This is terrific. 7.6 million in the float. Real small float for a stock that's probably going to start to climb real quick. Our financials for this company, as I said, they're doing billions of dollars of business. I mean, the first thing that pops into mind when you hear of a company going bankrupt is that they're broke, that they have no money. And that's really not the case. What it normally means is they've got 
too much debt that's weighing them down and they've got to find a way to distribute this, restructure it so they can float again and get back to doing what they do. So at the end of 2021, before the bankruptcy, they were doing about $2 billion worth of business. Looking at the most recent, all right, through 2022, looking at the very last quarter, she was at almost a half a billion dollars. Well, she's doing a half a billion dollars regularly, almost. So they are generating money. There was no way a company that generates this kind of money and has that sort of branding was going to perish. No, they weren't going to let Revlon disappear. There was a guarantee in my mind that this was coming back just like Hertz, just like Latham Airlines. When you have a company making money and everybody knows the name, somebody wants that. They'll restructure it. So they're making good money. Let's look at those disclosures. All right, we got lots of 8Ks here because they're coming out of bankruptcy. There's a lot of paperwork, if you will. But let's focus in on the one. On February 21st, 2023, the company parties entered into an amended and restated restructuring support agreement. And that's all we really need. Like I said, Seek Alpha is the only one. This is all the information online about this right now. Revlon could exit bankruptcy by April after settlement with lenders. Revlon has settled disputes with lenders reaching a deal on Tuesday. Tuesday, right? And here we are five days later and the stock isn't moving. What's going on? Under the terms of the deal, Revlon has received commitments for $670 million of new equity capital. After the settlement, Revlon lawyers project the cosmetics company could exit bankruptcy as soon as April. The company had previously targeted April 17th as the date by which the company could exit Chapter 11 protection. So they actually have a date, the 17th, not just a month. Now they said previously, I don't know if they've dropped it, but we're still in April, which is right around the corner. So I'm thinking this might be a good time to consider Revlon. Let's go take a look at that chart. Let's jump into some charting then. We're going to be doing our charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. If you like this bad boy, just run on over to TD Ameritrade. Sign up for their free trading account and they'll give this to you for free. And you can use it anytime you want. For free. <laughs> All right, we're looking at ticker REVRQ, the bankrupt ticker for Revlon. We got a high back here in October of $2.50 and she hit a low mid-December of $0.32. Cents. Bounced off of that really hard, came crashing back down, has worked her way over the 50 and now she has come under the 50 and rolling back up like she wants to start to run. This is almost like a cat crouching down before it pounces. That's what I see right here. It didn't break the 50 day with a fall. It's just getting a position to start climbing. And right now it is sitting nicely on top of her 50 day SMA with our 10 day coming up over it. Looking good. Our technicals are looking pretty fine. This is my PPO, my percentage price oscillator. Very much like the MACD, read it the same way. Well, I see my blue line is going up. That's what we want. This is my ADX, trend continuation. As long as my line down here, this red one is straight, it means that my trend on the chart is continuing. It's not about if this is pointing down or up. It's just, is the line continuing in the same direction? And when I see these two lines, the blue and the red, spreading apart and getting wider and wider, I know 100% the price is climbing. So the technicals look good right there. We got a strong crossover on our MACD with green bars accumulating and our RSI is just now touching 60. Take a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, she fell hard from this, uh, boy, that is 94 cents all the way down to 60 cents. Tried to hang on. You can see she was struggling to hang on to this 200, could not do it. Fell down to the low, but didn't want to stay there. Bounced off of that furiously across the 50, across the 200. She got up high, came down, bounced off of her 50, put herself right back up on top of that nine day SMA. That's beautiful. That was just a peg leg grabbing her balance. She wasn't falling. She was just paying homage to continue on. And that, you normally see one of these tags before they go for a long run. It's almost like a kiss goodbye. See you later. Gotta go. This thing's running. Our technicals, 
Well, everything is showing strength right now, except our RSI says she's falling right now. I'm not saying it's strong, but everything looks good right now. She's not desperate at all for not having very much volume, right? Five day, five minute. Well, the last five days, things have changed. And when was this? This was the 17th. It was uh, the 21st, I think they said it was. There is the 22nd. So right here is when the filing came out. This is all the 21st right here. That's a lot of 21st. So she came on the market the day the filing came out at 65 cents and she hit a high of 74. Not much at all under the radar. You see, some people are reading the filings. That's all I can say right here. She fell here. Boy, that was a nice buy in there. Bounced back up. She's hit a high. And of course, when you hit a high bubble, you anticipate a pullback. Not a fall. Just, ooh, I bumped my head. And you pull your head down, look up. Oh, it's okay. And you start to go again. So there's our pullback right there. I'm thinking she's going to continue to go, especially, and I can't imagine that Revlon won't put out a news press. Once a news press comes out that they're coming out of bankruptcy, everybody's going to see it. And I think this could have a serious run. Uh, technicals on the five minutes, not great. Not great. They're, pu they're pulling back every single one of them, not desperately, not falling. As I said, she had a pullback, and that does show up on our technicals right here. But this isn't really, I mean, the charts look good. That's how I found this. I looked at the charts first, and I was like, oh, Revlon, really? And she had news to back up the charts. So everything is timing out here perfectly. We've got a catalyst that's under the radar, a stock that's at a low price that is just now starting to break out. I think it looks good, folks. Ticker REVRQ. You better put it on your watch list because I'm not going to be surprised when this thing runs. You shouldn't be either. I told you we'd be going all over looking for these penny stocks. This one comes off the major exchange. It's a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker OTMO, Atomo Technologies. Now, Atmo, they had a news press come out. They had a filing come out, both about the same thing. They're in the midst of closing a big deal. Their revenues are growing right now. The chart is hot. It looks like it's ready to break out. I can't find any reason why I shouldn't be sharing this with you. So Atmo, she finished the day at about 53.5 cents with almost 3.5% gains. Now Atmo is involved in automotive data. That's their business. They tell us here that Atmo is a platform powering the mobility economy. They are igniting a new generation of mobility experiences and services and are making mobility more accessible, equitable, sustainable, and safe. With Atmo, over 100 providers in the transportation, mobility, insurance, and automotive industries are finally able to harness mobility data and insights and transform them into strategic assets and market advantages. Comes down to this, folks. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. That's all they're about is providing information and data about the mobility sector to all these different organizations so they can make more money. It's a big business. So what was the relative volume around Atmo today? Ooh, she dropped a little bit from 400,000 down to 326,000. Our share structure for Atmo? All right, we've got nothing here but our outstanding. That's $132 million. Couldn't go into the disclosures or the financials for it, so I ended up doing a search. Well, out of all that I looked at, and I looked at a couple pages, I only found one number. One, the float, $45.7 million. Now, whether that's accurate or not, I don't know. So we know it's under $132 million and could be $45 million. Financials for Atmo. All right, I told you her financials were growing. At the end of 2021, for the entire year, they did $1.7 million. Remembering those three zeros behind here. When you come over to the quarterly, you don't get any information. So I did dive into the most recent financial, and that came out, uh, when was that? Shoot, we gotta go way back. That came out uh, somewhere back here, doggone it. In either case, I looked it up. It wasn't one of these 6Ks. They did $2 million in the quarter of September. $2 million in one quarter when they only did $1.7 million all last year. So their revenues are growing very quickly. Now you can see they've got a lot of filings. These are pretty much all recent. You see all these 425s? 
You've got to love these. Every single one of these is communication to the investors. All sorts of things, whether it be filings, a letter. I think this top one is a letter. Yeah, this is a letter from the CEO. Every single one of these is communication directly to the investors. You got to love a company that keeps in touch with their investors. Then we've got one, two, three, four, 13 GAs. 13 Gs are beneficiary ownership. This is when new investors come in, big investors. They invest so much that they actually become part owners in the company and get voting rights on what this company is going to do. And we've just had a bunch of those. And then, as I said, we've got a lot of 6Ks here. Well, I went through every 6K because I was worried about this price. This is on the NASDAQ. This is under a dollar. If you're under a dollar for too long, you can be removed from the major exchanges down to the OTC market. Well, I looked at the chart. She is just about at that six month point, but I have not seen any warnings yet from the NASDAQ. So we don't have any bad news sitting on the table, but it's got to be close. Taking a look at Atmos News. All right, there's lots of news down here, but most of it isn't about this company. But this one is, and this is the one we really need to focus in on. This came out February 9th. Atmo and Urgently to combine to create a leading mobility services company. The proposed merger would create an end-to-end -end platform for a new generation of mobility services and experiences for automotive original equipment manufacturers, insurance, transportation, rental and fleet partners, and their customers. Now, Urgently is taking over Atmo. They're going to become the primary company, and they're going to be changing the ticker to ULY. They plan on closing this deal the third quarter of 2023, and look at this. Urgently's revenues in 2022 were $185 million. Think about that. In 2021, Atmo did 1.7 million. And even though they're kicking butt right now in the third quarter of 2022, they got 2 million. That doesn't compare to 185 million. And they're merging with this company. So everything that urgently is, Atmo is going to be too. So all that money is coming into their house. Looking good, isn't it? And they've got some huge investors. Urgently's investors include BMW iVentures, Porsche Ventures, Jaguar Land Rovers in Motion Ventures, American Tire Distributors, Iron Gate Capital, and Emerald Technology Ventures. Now, I don't recognize all those names, but I know you and I recognize three of them for sure, BMW, Porsche, and Jaguar. So they've got some huge investors backing them up, and they just got a whole bunch of new investors. Now, there was one of those disclosures I did want to jump into. I told you that the company likes to communicate with their investors. Well, this was one of them about this combination. We expect the combination of Atmo and Urgently will create a mobility service powerhouse that can ignite a new generation of mobility services and experiences for the automotive OEM, transportation and mapping, insurance, rental and fleet partners, and their customers. With over 1.7 billion connected vehicles expected to be on the road in the next decade, the combined company will serve markets totaling well over $100 billion. Together, Atmo and Urgently have solutions operating in more than 26 countries and more than 100 partnership agreements across automotive original equipment manufacturers, transportation, mapping, insurance, fleet and rental sectors, covering up to 70 million vehicles, more than 80,000 estimated connected assistance service professionals, and 36 registered and pending patents. So they're no little operation. They're in lots of countries. They're working with lots of data, helping lots of companies, got lots of partners, and now they've got lots of money coming in. And that is huge, folks. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Not a bad looking chart, eh? This is Atmo, O-T-M-O, six month, four hour chart. She has been in a downtrend for quite a while, deep under her 200, predominantly under her 50. She hit a high here of $1.33 back in June of last year and has been falling all the way down to this low bubble it hit in October of 20 cents. And once it hit that low bubble, it was a different game. No more downtrend, we are now in an uptrend. Slow, but steady. She 
She has crossed over 200, bringing her 50-day SMA with her. She was up over the 200-day SMA for months, just barely cracked it here, and is now getting strong again, getting on top of that 50-day SMA. And look at our lows here. This low here is higher than that one. That low is higher than that one. All the way up, every low is higher than the low before. That's a nice stair step of climbing. Our technicals, they're looking good. Our PPO is strong. We've just had a crossover a couple of days ago and it is pushing up. MACD has crossed over to signal line. Green bars are accumulating. RSI is at 61. And look at that beautiful straight line on my ADX. This tells me whatever trend is on my chart is continuing. What's our trend? A beautiful climb. She's going up nicely. And our volume is starting to come into the picture now. Let's look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, she had a nice big jump here, fell fast, and then had a dynamite jump here very quick, very abrupt, and it was over in a very short amount of time. She came down, crashed through her 200, hit a low bubble here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a regression channel right here so we got an idea of what's really going on with the price. So, we see she went sideways on her 20-day SMA here, hit the bottom of the channel, started to push up, crossed the center of the channel right here, pushed up hard, broke the outside of the channel, came back into the center, broke outside, has pulled back again. And it is sitting there looking like it wants to break out of this channel and start to run. Our technicals they're cooling off a little bit on the one hour. We did have some pullback at the back half of the day on Friday, so that's showing up on our technicals. Five day, five minute. Let's grab this and get this out of our way. We don't need that anymore. So here it was where she was going sideways doing barely anything. Look at how flat. God, that is really nothing. You would think she was dead. Then all of a sudden, she popped over that 50 and she got life again. She got on top of her nine day SMA, Jumped off for 50, got too high from it, came down to the 50 again, back up, back down to her 50. You can see what she's doing. She's just wrestling with this 50, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing off of it. And right now, it looks like she's trying to get back up on top of it. But the technicals do show that things are cooling off right now. But we've got some hot news. We got a company here that's doing what? three million dollars a year and they're merging with a company that did 185 million dollars last year so is this going to stay at this price i don't think so i would put atmo on my watch list and i'd be ready for a jump at any moment i don't know when but i think it's coming over the last six weeks we have done a lot of talking and purchasing of warrants attached to SPACs not just any warrant, just those attached to SPACs because that gives us some added advantages. One of those added advantages is a concrete window of opportunity. You see, SPACs got deadlines. They've got 18 to 24 months to consummate a deal. And if they don't, they liquidate. They go out of business. What that literally means is that they are refunding the investors for all that they bought. How do they know how much to give each one? That's simple. Every share of stock costs $10 when you buy into a SPAC, and they're only worth $10 until they close a deal. Now, they may have news that they're in merger talks. They may have signed a letter of intent. The stock, that $10 share, is not going to move. What's going to move by default is the penny stock warrant. That is going to run, and we are seeing hundreds, even thousands of percent gains on these stocks. Those are the advantages. The fact that the stock isn't going to move and the warrant will move. That there's a, a concrete window of opportunity, a deadline. We know when these things are going to end. So I'm loving this. But there's an added benefit here too that can make us even more money. Now, you can't ignore all of this if you're not interested in warrants themselves. If you just like trading them as stock, that's no problem at all. But if you do want to hear how you can make more money with these warrants, I'm going to share that with you right now. Warrants are coupons. They are promissory notes that allow you, the investor, to buy a share of the company's stock anytime in the next five years for only $11.50. Let's look at Lunar. <laughs> Lunar here was a SPAC. 
It was IPAX. They closed their deal, changed their ticker, changed their name, got on the market just a little over a week ago and took off. Lunar went to the moon. She hit over $136 last week. Well, as soon as that happened, questions started rolling in on Twitter and Google. How do I cash in my warrants? Can I cash them in now? Where's the information about these warrants? So I'm going to share that with you right now because I do think it's relevant information. So what you want to do is look for a filing. You want to look for an S1 or an S4. These two filings have the information in them. There may be others, but we're going to try to keep this simple. So the first thing you need to do is jump over to disclosures. So we're going to go ahead and look for that S1 or S4 over here in our list of disclosures. Now we're going to have to utilize this more button quite a few times because chances are your S4s and your S1s are farther back, months, maybe even a full year. So don't get tired pushing the more button. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm going to click this as fast as I can. I'm not sure how far I got to go. Just keep your eye over here. This is where you're going to see your S1 and your S4s. Oh. Ooh, we've got some right here. We got three of them. S4, S4, S4. It doesn't matter which one you go into. They all pretty much say the same thing with just little subtle differences. So we're going to dive into this one right here. Now these S4s can be rather long. This one here I did look at, it's over a hundred pages of information. So this would take you a long time to find what you're looking for without a shortcut. Now a shortcut is using your search bar. But don't go just throwing in the word warrant. I mean, it sounds like a shortcut, but it really isn't. The word warrant shows up in this filing over 2,000 times. That's a ton of reading too. The shortest shortcut I found is just to type in redemption of warrants. That's it. Look, I've only got two returns out of all of that. 100 pages, only two places to look, and I got it right the very first time. Redemption of warrants when the price per class A ordinary share equals or exceeds $18. Now, I do want to point out one thing here. When you're going through these long forms, make sure that you find class A ordinary or class A common shares. There are class A preferred warrants that come with a class A preferred stock. So we got nothing to do with that. Make sure you're looking at class A ordinary, class A common. And we got all the information we need. Get out of there. <laughs> right here in that one little paragraph, 100 pages, and all we needed was that one little paragraph here. Now this is pretty standard amongst all SPACs. There might be some differences here and there, so always verify and check. But they tell us right here that when the price of the stock exceeds $18, for any 20 trading days within a 30 trading day period, the warrant's live. And did, did you catch that? For any 20 trading days. It doesn't have to be 20 trading days in a row. You could have five days at the beginning of the month, 10 days in the middle, it dropped to a dollar, come back up in the last five days, it's over 18 bucks. The warrant is alive and ready to go. So we've got good short game with these warrants. Getting runs when the stock can't move. And we could make some money down the road. So my plan, what I've been doing, I get into a warrant. I don't sell everything when I take my gains. I leave 25 or 50 shares in there for when this gets up there, when it's up at $100, I'm going to take my $11.50 in my warrant and I'm going to go buy a share for 100 bucks. Now, in this country, they don't give you the shares. In Canada, they give you the shares. Here, we're all about the money. Show me the money. So that's all they do. You give them eleven fifty and a warrant, they put $100 into your account, if that's what the stock is going for. So if you have 10 warrants, give them $115, they'll put $1,000 into your account if the stock is going for $100. But who knows what they're going to be going for in two, three, four, five years. You've got all that time to make up your mind. And when you want to cash, them in, it's not all that difficult. Just give a call to your broker. Tell him you want to exercise your warrants. Tell him how many. He'll ask you a couple questions. They'll take care of the deal for you and deposit the money into your account that day. Don't that sound good? Due diligence, folks. It is really a lot of fun. It doesn't matter if you're looking at the charts, if you're looking at filings, or you're looking at the news. If you know what you're looking for and you know how to find it, it really is a treasure hunt. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.